What's going on everyone? It's RZ over here at Buku Games and I know it has been a while but I'm finally here with another devlog for our game Cursed Kingdom that we've been working on. I know we haven't talked much about this game since we announced it over like about half a year ago at this point but I wanted to show a lot more about what the game's about, what exactly your objective is, a lot of things we didn't get to talk about in that announcement video. So hopefully I'm still not too horrible at this devlog thing. I'm learning as I go uh, with everyone. So let me get, get your feedback and uh, I would love to hear more about what you guys want to see in future devlogs. I can't promise they'll be consistent, but I'm going to try my best to do more and show you guys the journey we're taking as we develop this game. But anyways, without further ado, I know you guys don't want to hear me ramble. so. Let's get right over to Unity and I will show you the gameplay because that's exactly what you're here to see, isn't it? Well, let's go. All right, guys, so we're over here in Unity. And as you can see, uh, we have a lot of placeholder stuff uh, because obviously the game is in development. So a lot of what you see here is definitely placeholder, not final. And uh, just look forward to things getting polished as we go along. But isn't that the point of devlogs? So you guys can be part of the journey with us. <laughs> Anyways. Um, the point of Cursed Kingdom, I know we haven't really gone over like the rules or anything. What is Cursed Kingdom? It's a digital board game. And as you can see, my character over here is on the board standing in their aisle position here. Uh, what do you do in board games? You go around the board and certain spaces and other th effects may happen. And it's no different here at Cursed Kingdom. The point of Cursed Kingdom is to be the last one standing. And how do you do that? Well, as you can see by all these heart icons, you want to reduce all other players' health to zero. Um, if you are the last person with health remaining, then you are considered the victor. So how do you do that? Well, in most games, you got dice and you roll the dice and you move around things like Monopoly and other games like that. But here in Cursed Kingdom, it's all about these movement cards. These movement cards are what you're going to be using to move around the board and, uh, do other things, which we aren't getting into today, but there are other uses for them. But for the most part, just know they're your way to move around the board. You also have things called support cards and these support cards will do other effects um there are things like the dual system which we'll talk about in another video not right now but there are also things that may protect you things that you may uh when enemies are attacking you may be able to protect yourself using support cards they'll basically bolster your offensive and defensive uh capabilities with a myriad of different effects so i'm gonna just walk you through a basic turn of Curse Kingdom here and show you exactly what will happen when we say use a card and do some other stuff. All right, so I'm going to take a turn here. Um, the way that a turn works is, is they are broken up into phases. I'm not going to specifically get into all that today, but just know that you can use a support card or a movement card when your turn starts. I'm just going to go straight to a movement card so we can select one here. And when I click it again, my guy is going to move two spaces. And you'll see there is a little space effect here. His space effect happens and then it moves on to the next player's turn and obviously that is a very very rudimentary version of what's happening there so my character there lost some health which you see on the top left and also he drew a card which is pretty nice so you lose some health but you get you know some spaces give you benefits some give you negative effects some give you uh, a, a combination of both so you gotta be sure that you know which space you're gonna be landing on. All right guys, so I'm here with another player and as you can see, we have some support cards here that'll deal some damage. There's some elemental spells in here. You know, we got that medieval old school vibe or you know, pretty much stuff with magic, so stuff with thievery, warriors, that type of vibe we're going for here with the game. Um, but here's one of the things you can use is like a fire spell here. So I'm gonna activate this support card and it will ask me to select the player to attack. Obviously we have placeholder images now, but you'll definitely be able to see more information about who you will attack. So I'm just gonna attack uh, this guy since I'm player one, uh, it'll attack the guy over here. Um, you'll see his health will go down by one when I use that effect. And now I'm still able to move. However, you're only allowed to use one movement, one movement or support card a turn unless otherwise specified. So if I attempt to use another one, Oh no, I'm not allowed to use that. So I, my only other option really is to move or I can look around the map if I choose to do so. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this character, what I just showed on the screen is that they landed on the extra step space. So when their turn begins, they're allowed to use more than one movement card. 
Um, this is a special effect, which some spaces, when you land on them and you begin your turn, you get a, an extra effect on them. So you'll have to read the space effects and really plan your movements and how that's going to work. So with this character, now I can use two movement cards, which will get me really far across the board. The reason you want to move more across the board is once you make a full lap, you're able to level up and get better stats. You can hold more cards in your hand. Um, you do more damage potentially and you unlock other abilities for your characters. So here I'm going to just use this 5 and 7 and my character is going to move a cool 12 spaces because math. Uh, notice I'm not able to go into those middle spaces there. I'm not a high enough level. Uh, but you know, that's what happens. You're going to have to uh, level up so you can get further into the, the level there. And that's basically all there is to a main turn in Cursed Kingdom. There's obviously many more nuances to what you can do there. You gotta look at what space you're gonna be landing on. You have to make sure your resources are good. Are you low on movement cards? Are you low on support cards? Do you wanna draw more support cards, etc.? You gotta look at all that. Do you wanna be more of an aggressive player, but then the other players may target you? There are so many different ways for you to play this game, and that's what I love about it. It's never gonna be the same game twice. We also have a lot of other things such as the different classes, uh, different abilities, certain other mechanics that we haven't even shown off yet. So there's a lot of depth to this game, but it's also a game that anyone can just pick up and play. And I think that's what's going to make it the most fun. So with that being said, I'm not going to keep this game, this, sorry, not this game, this video about a video game going on too long. And uh, I hope that I can share more with you guys on Curse Kingdom soon. And we're hard at work on it, but we don't also we also don't want to burn ourselves out. That's why we haven't really been posting on social media much. We want to make sure that we're having fun because that's the entire point of us making games is to have fun and have a good time and learn. So uh, putting everything together and seeing it on screen and being able to show you guys for once is awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I can do more devlogs in the future. And for now, this has been RZ over at Buku Games. And remember, guys, if it's not fun, it's not worth it. See you guys later.